Welcome to Stories from the Standing Room. Join us for tales of history, phantoms, folklore, ghost stories, mysterious happenings, and more. A playful and fun weekly podcast with a British husband and his American wife. Join us from inside our 450-year-old home in the English countryside. The journeys into the past, the arcane, and the downright spooky. Hello. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, wife. Husband, this is episode number six. No. Can you believe that? Not really. It seems like about four. I know. I'm or wondering maybe three. if we're in the frame there. It's weird. Are we? Uh, that's a different frame than normal. That's all right. Yeah, fine. That's all right. Just, you just move just a little. I think inch, I shall. I shall. Two inches. Move my way. bottom your way. There we go. All right. There we go. We're in line. Um. Yeah. There we go. In line. Okay. Uh, I just gonna. I'm gonna pop over just to see. Um, can you just engage them? Oh, I'm just going to engage with you. <laughs> just for a second. I'm deeply engaged. Look, they're engaged moment. already. There they are. Oh, they are? You see them? They're, they're engaged. Oh, good. I'm engaged. Did you see the little faces? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there they go. There's something floating in front of my eyes. It's like a red... Oh, they are there. Okay, there good. Yeah. Hello, we hello, hello. Hello, hello everyone. welcome, everybody. It's Saturday night here it's at Totnes. It's Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. Saturday Night Live. We, we can't say that. I think we might get sued by Lauren Michaels. Oh, is there a, is there a show called... <laughs> I bet you, I bet as a, a transatlantic... Husband, you're kidding. No, I think, have you mentioned... Oh, my gosh. It's not on the TV here. I, can you believe what he just said, you guys? Oh, is there a Saturday Night Live? I think we should just... Pick that we should just go ahead and go... Just leave the room right exactly, now. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yes, there is one, and it has yeah. been running for... It's one of the longest Would running shows. Would this be Saturday Night Dead? Probably, after that, that, after yeah. that... No, I mean, generally. Oh, okay. Saturday Night Dead. Oh, that's dead. a good idea! See? Saturday Night Dead. I think we should do that. Yeah, I think go. Saturday Night Dead yeah. because it's all about ghosts Dead and people. folklore and history. So yeah. therefore, there is a there is death, and I think that's a very good idea. Yeah. High five, Saturday Night I Dead. Did. Welcome and our apologies to Lauren Michaels. They like that. They're saying they like that. Good. Good. Um, how are you tonight, sweetheart? You all right? I think I'm okay. Yeah. I'm a bit warm. If I go like this, it's just because I'm getting a bit warm. Yeah, you are hot. I'm hot in a good way too. Handsome man. <laughs> I'm just, oh, no. Now we just everybody's just gone away. I'll throw okay. uh, We do have the pub across the street. Uh, just FYI, uh, there is a pub that once in a long, long while will go off, and yeah. it literally is pumping classic rock. Yeah. Um, and so, it's just a tiny little pub, like about this big, this big with band in there and like a load of people, and they open their windows. And so literally, the band is about and it's right onto the street, fifteen feet away from us. So uh, yeah, yeah, so it's live music. So if you can hear that, that's what's that's going on. Why? Well, yeah. Welcome anyway. Yes. Tonight it is. Go ahead. It's family ghost stories. Family ghost stories. Everybody's got them. Tonight we have for you Joy Galloway has written in, and uh, she was our very first Tales of the Arcane uh, submitter. Where you come in, where we have your ghost stories coming in either by uh, by writing in or you can uh, MP3 them in on your smartphone. There's a way to make an MP3. It's super easy peasy. Depending on your smartphone, drop me a line. I'll walk you through it. And we'd love to be able to play you telling your own ghost stories yeah. as well. So it could be, it doesn't have to be a ghost. It could be anything paranormal, anything supernatural, anything, anything out of the norm. Yeah. We would love to uh, hear from you. Interesting yeah? stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, Joy Galloway is as written in. I also have a personal story I'm going to be sharing about my mother. And you have quite well, a few. I have quite a few. Yes, you do. Okay. I mean, the thing what we're talking at, what we're looking at tonight I'm have is the mood so I can look at you. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. The thing that we're looking at tonight, a family ghost story. So generally, yes, the vast, vast majority of these stories are much more accessible. They're not about strange or potentially dark forces. They're friendly, supportive, human. Um, normal interaction within another framework. People that you know, and we're going to be showing, well, people that you knew, yeah, well, or would have known people if they were alive. And I'm going to actually show you something that did manifest. Uh, I've been able to keep that item uh, that actually took place after my mother passed away. So we're going to get to those. And uh, we have uh, another submission from New York. Red Wolf has written in from New York oh, as excellent. part of our Tales from the Arcane. So, I'm thinking, would you like to get started? We have promoed. Well, real quick, I want to thank the folks on Twitter. Welcome, Twitter, uh, because we just have an influx. This this week, we did a big thing of, with Twitter. Yeah. So, Stories from the Standing Room. It's Stories from the Standing Room, HRH, which is Haunted Rooms in History. Yeah. And you might be able to become an HRH, which yeah. means that you're part of our royal family. Yeah. 
We will, we will talk about that a little further down yes. the line, but, but yes. welcome to, to Twitter friends from Twitter. Twitterverse, want to thank them. And what were you going to say? I don't know, I did. Uh, okay, well, we are. We <laughs> want to age the I mean, senior moment. I know, that's yeah. all right. Well, we're getting there. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, we will soon be on Spotify, husband. Excellent. Will yes, we? we'll, we'll be seeing. Probably, yes. Oh, Actually, no, we want to keep our viewers. Um, I thought, oh, I, no, I we're, we're on Spotify where we're going to be on Spotify. Yeah, technologically challenged. Well, that's why yeah. you've got me. Hopefully, some of my broadcasting Good, yeah. skills can pay off because podcasts, they say, are the new radio, which is great. We're so excited. There are a lot of paranormal podcasts. There's lots of people doing lots of interesting things, and we are happy to be teaming up with those yeah, guys to be so. able to share these stories uh, together. So, uh, Twitter, you can find us stories from the standing room, HRH. Yeah. Uh, just put in stories from the standing room, you'll find us. Uh, for for now, we are uh, with friends and family on Ann Kelly, uh, which is, thank God, you are our studio audience. We yeah, couldn't do it without you. It makes a real difference yes. having you with us because, I don't know, there's something about actually speaking to real people, even yes. though you're not in the room. They we are. Know we know you're, you're there with yes. us, even though we can't see you. And so if we were to do this without a live audience, it just wouldn't be the no, same. Work at all. I don't think so. So no, thank I'd God for I'd that. I'd cheat, I'd say. Yes, you would. You'd say, we cut. Yes, you would. You sure would. Say, yeah, uh, so we have, we're doing it live here on uh, Facebook friends and family for yeah. uh, my very very close friends and family which I love and adore we share you over on stories from the standing room at Facebook we also ha want to welcome all of our new SoundCloud followers Oh yes, we had I'm a big so badge totally last good. week. What's that well, about? I'll tell you later. Oh, good. Um, but it's good. <laughs> Welcome, like SoundCloud. I'm very pleased to be on this. SoundCloud, SoundCloud they are amazing. Yeah. So thank you very okay. much for SoundCloud uh, for all of you coming and joining us there. And YouTube, please. Uh, you know we we do have to do the, the plug. Please, if you can, I oh, do yeah, put these up the next the, day. Please yeah. pop over and subscribe if you will. And yeah, thank please you. subscribe to YouTube. It makes thank a big you. It's for stories from keeps it all going. Yes, it does. It does. So uh, we're really learning as we go along, and thank God for our studio audience. And we promo uh, in the morning on Saturday we like to do a little promo uh, of the stories that are coming up and the little girl is a story that I've heard since uh, I've been in your family yeah um, and um, it is a very interesting story would you like to lead let's start yeah. oh they got hearts they want to hear I one think to what I would say is is all of these stories and, and, and some of the other things I may mention tonight do come from uh, the stories I heard as a child, which were right, really spooky as a child, yes. hearing these stories, I found them much more spooky from telling them that. Yes. Because when you're a child, you're, you're seeing things in a different way, everything's a bit more... I well, it is. It's, I mean, it's, it's true. More in focus, yeah. Maybe. And it's um, so, so all these are the stories that I grew up with as, from, a, from a toddler onwards. Um, and some of them, a couple of them, well, one, at least one of them, what was happening when I was a toddler, and one of them happened last year. So we've got them. So we've, we've got a ser I've got a series of family sort of ghost stories or spirit stories, call them whatever you want, which go from the kind of late 1850s through to last year. So really, we've got a big span of family stuff. And really quick, the reason that it spans so far is because his generations and his family are wide and wide. So there was a few whoops. Hello, yes. everybody. So, like exactly. 50, sometimes so, in their yeah. 40s and 50s having babies. So, I, I'm talking about my uncle being born 115 years ago. That, well, wait a minute. Your uncle or your great uncle? My uncle. My uh, my uncle, Jack. Look, if you look at the photograph, I mean, what, there, it, that's my uncle and my that's, aunt. That's, that's the it. 1920s? No, that's later than that. He died. Okay. Ooh, but, so okay, that's so, more like just after 1900. Okay, so that was... My uncle and my aunt. This is Uncle Jack. My, and my auntie. And that is your—that's your brother's. I mean, your dad's brother. Yes, and sister. That well, is that's so taken weird. Well before the Great War, that's taken 110 years. He's before. a handsome fellow, Jack. And who's the little one on the chair? That's my aunt. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll talk about Jack in a second. But and there are stories that go with yes. both of these people. Yes, there people, are, and I'm going to show which them again is as we go. But we don't have a picture of the little girl because we don't know who she no, is. We don't know who the little girl is. When did she first start appearing? Well, <laughs> the little girl. As far as we can definitely pin her down, was certainly when my grandmother was dying in 1964. Right. She did. She was talking. She was on morphine, um, and she was saying stories. But there was another train that went alongside the could have confused more things stories that had a different kind of resonance and, and was more was less confused and was really. She kept going back to and she kept describing this little girl who was when she was when she was particularly stressed and in hospital she'd come at night and stroke her hair or hold her hand the little girl would come to your little girl. Hmm. in the um, hospital yes okay. in the hospital right. so this is back in 60 yeah 
And so there was this story of the little girl. Now, but we think the little girl had appeared to other members of the family previous to that. Hmm. But it's, this is when it begins to get lost in family history. So we think potentially the little girl had shown up at other times. Okay. Um, and one of the interesting, almost like a subplot to this, is the family started to call her Lizzie because my grandmother's sister had died or was it my grandmother's aunt? Forgive me, I can't remember if it was my grandmother's aunt or my grandmother's sister, but Lizzie had died as a little girl. Mm. And I think it could have been her aunt. Okay. So, but what you, you have to visualise is the story I'm about to tell starts in a, in a cottage, an industrial cottage, a dinner term, but it, we're going back to um, very old cottages, one room up, one room down, no gas, no electric, and really, they, they were very poor, so they couldn't afford candles. They were just like oil tapers. Right, and so everything's that, yeah. very dark. So yeah. you're actually talking about very old, small rooms with no light. And when we, we, we forget in the past, and we watch historic dramas and things on TV, and they're lit, we don't realise how dark these yeah, very, places very, were. Very, very, very dark. But most, yeah. even, even wealthy people had dark houses. You they did. Like them. So we're going back to this very kind of strange, atmospheric house. Um, Potentially um, in the 1860s, so we're going. So quite, we went from 1960 with the little girl. Yeah, we're, we're going, going back, back to the beginning of the little to, girl. Yeah, we're okay. going back to the potential of the little girl. Okay. A hundred years before. Okay. Potentially, and we're going back to this small dark cottage. Okay, it's 1860s. No light, 1860s. Yeah. So it's it's kind of it's pre what you would call often what Americans would see as Victorian, which is more 1880s and 1890s. Right. It's pre that. It's kind of American Civil War time. A very, a very, a a very small space, yeah. no light, dark. And the old girls are in the bed. So you had a tiny little bed for all six... Well, girls. it was probably, yeah, I mean, what kind of bed it was. Bed, yeah. It was probably, it was more like a, I mean, it was more like a, a wooden frame, probably, because then mm. at that point, very poor people couldn't afford that I kind understand, of the mattresses were... Yeah, yeah. yeah, mattresses and beds are what they put in movies, but in actual fact, most people didn't have that kind of luxury. Yeah. They were more like platforms. Um... And so all girls are lying on this. And this is where the family, the, the family story starts to, to develop the little girl. Because they're all there. And one night, it starts with, as a painted, the ceiling is quite low and it's painted. There's no paper on the ceiling. But through the ceiling, onto the bed, start to fall pieces of paper. Yes. Small, ripped pieces of the paper. Yes. And the, the, they, they couldn't come through. There was, no, there was no paper on the ceiling. And as they watched, they were coming through the ceiling. They were manifesting through the ceiling. So the ceiling was painted. The ceiling is solid, and obviously. And there's nothing and that painted, could come off. Nothing that will come off. And it starts to almost like snow, occasionally, bits of paper onto the girls. Were they sleeping? Well, no, they're all watching this paper fall from there. But okay. they couldn't really see it very clearly. Because, because of the darkness. The darkness, yes. but out of the darkness, it's like snow falling from a night sky. That would be very the strange. The paper is beginning to fall on them. Yes. And this continues, and I'm not sure if it continues for a single night or for several nights. Right. And then a few days later, out of the darkness, a shadow appears. Now, what you must remember here is a very dark cottage. It's not like we would see a shadow in a house now because we have electric lights and so the rooms are lit and the shadow is very pronounced. Yes. But it will be darkness on top of darkness. Yes. So they describe the shadow appearing but it'd be a very so there was this sh shadow figure they described pointing at Lizzie. Hmm. The little girl called Lizzie. So maybe this was a shadow, or what they call, um, what they call shadow people, or maybe it was. But they all the yeah. girls recognised the shadow yes. as their dad, who died Ooh. a couple of years before. Really, the I shape think, of him? Yeah, I think he may have died in a mining accident or industrial accident. I think I'm not sure about that. Mm. But he died a couple of years before, mm. so they recognised the shape of their father. But it was like a shadow. Like and the shadow, shadow was pointing. People. And the shadow 
pointed to one of the children called Lizzie. Oh. And Lizzie died within a couple of weeks. Oh, my. How and old was she? So, oh, she? She was a little girl. She, she must have been maybe eight or nine. Oh, bless her. So it kind of, for some reason, the family has now begun to refer to this little girl as Lizzie. Yes. Uh, if it is Lizzie, we don't know. But for some reason, there is certainly a dynamic there where people are referring to this, this little girl that appeared to certainly my grandmother, and also recently to an aunt, which is a story I'll tell you in a moment. So we have the, the potential of a, a, the death of a little girl a long time ago. Yes, you have, the, you have somebody telling her of a death, and she's coming when before death then. So, yes, so this little just... girl then begins to appear to women in the family. And Only the... women? Yes, as far as I know. Okay. If I see a little girl, I'll tell you, and we, we film the whole thing, and then we can... <laughs> then we'll know. We know, won't we? I think it would have to be, it'd be on your, this is your maternal... My maternal, maternal side. side. Yes, it's my maternal So the females side, yeah. on your maternal side. Uh, I had, as an interesting, recent... Mary, yes. Yeah, as a, um, as a recent uh, manifestation of the little girl. I had an aunt um, who, unfortunately, sadly died about two years ago. Yes. And um, the little girl appeared to her. What happened is that um, the first time it, it, it came into a kind of family conversation when my aunt was still alive right. uh, was my cousin and my aunt had been staying at a, or coaching him. An old coaching yeah. him, yes. so it, was a, it was a very old pub in they were staying in that went back. Just on holiday, yes. Yeah, like a weekend or mm -hmm. something. Uh, they'd been staying there for several for, for a weekend, mm -hmm. and um, the his the best of my knowledge how the story goes. From, uh, my cousin wakes, and she sees a little girl standing there, who she thinks is from the next room, the side of her bed. In her room. In her room. Mm -hmm. Just and the little girl, as, as my cousin opens her eyes, the little girl goes, "Oh!" And the little girl is slightly surprised because my cousin opens her eyes and goes, "Oh, hello!" So the little girl goes, "Hello." Oh. And Marion goes, oh, and, Ma um, and my, so my cousin then goes to say, oh, are you kind of, are you from the next room? And then, and then the little girl evaporates. Wow. My, she just disappears. Yes, and my cousin is thinking, I'm in a haunted room. Oh, I'm in a haunted oh room. Gosh. So I don't think she probably had a very good night's sleep that night. Next day, when she went down to breakfast, she, she went down and told her mother. Yes. And her mother says, after mm. a slight pause, mm. oh, You've mm. seen her too. Oh. So thinking, and Mary, uh, my, my cousin begins to think, Ooh. oh, is, 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 is she in your room? And my aunt says, um, no, I've seen her at home. Ah. So okay. the, the idea of the, the, you, you have gone to visit the ghost and actually, or the spirit, or the entity, or whatever. Yes. Whereas the... She, the little girl, is actually with you. So she, okay, the uh, your aunt had seen her previously to this trip. Yes, and at the house, at their home, and had descri and described her to marry and Mar uh, to my cousin, and, ma and then my cousin was able to say, yeah. Okay, so they knew, though, that this was a premonition. Did they know that at that time? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think they were just just living their lives, and it was just... But, I, but my aunt did say... Um, that a couple of weeks later she was in the kitchen. Yes. And so the, the, she, was, she, was, she was doing the dishes at the sink and facing the window. Right. And behind her was a door and behind that door was a hallway and then some stairs. And she heard a little girl running quite fast down the stairs and through inside the hallway the towards her. Yeah, inside the house. She was the only person in the house. The house was locked. It was daytime. Yes. It wasn't night. It was daytime. She was just doing the dishes. So she just put the dish down she was washing, just didn't turn around, mm. walked to the door, to the side door, let herself out without turning around and walked into the garden. And then she told her daughter then that she, there was a presence yeah, there. Yeah, she did. And so how long after that did your aunt pass? Within uh, how long? It was months, there, wasn't it? It was, it was probably about 
maybe six weeks. Six weeks? It was probably about that amount of time. And, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe my aunt saw her maybe more times than that. I don't know. But... Uh, or felt her, but we don't know. So, as far as we know, this, uh, as appearing to the grandmother, maternal grandmother, then you have the aunts, her daughters, uh, yeah. and then now, the seen by both your cousin and her mother, yeah. would this then be something to look out for on with the females on your... your I suppose yeah. so, yeah. yeah. But, 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 I mean, it's, it's also not... It, it's, it, there, is a, there is an optimism there, yes. because it's also showing that it isn't a... A complete end and nothing, and the reason that the death is just death. Yes. It's also showing that there is a an uh, an interdimensional connection with with the passing stage. That's true. So actually, even though that person might be thinking, "Whoops," yeah, I think it's also showing it's okay. This is part of an interdimensional change. That is a beautiful thing too. That's why we like to see that there's something else other than just this reality that we're in. Yeah. So is it an ominous sign, the little girl? How would no, you feel I, if you saw her? Would you feel that that was time to? I'd probably put my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> would you really? Yeah. You would. Well, it would be easier for you. Well, you I know? guess so. I, I mean, guess it would. But um, it, what would would you think if you saw a little girl in a if house? If I now? saw a little girl in a house now, I think. Would you think it's time? I just think it's time. You would? But there's nothing wrong with that anyway. I just think it's time. Right. I just think, oh, well, if the little girls come to say hello to me, then that that's might okay. Be, yeah. That's okay. It might be something to look out for. It that's might be something to look out for. Maybe it so. happens to the men in the family. We don't know. We don't know. We'll find out. we tell you. But do you know uh, what we were, uh, which is a, a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that because I know it's very close. And I remember... <gasps> The little girl, I remember hearing that off in phone calls uh, that you had with the family during that time. Yeah. The little girl, the little girl. So it's interesting to actually be able to flush that out. And has anybody ever described what she looks like? She's quite pretty. She is? She's quite pretty and very solid oh. and very sweet and oh. almost like at ease and at home and in family. Really? Oh, that's It's really not like beautiful. a strange spectral child yes. coming from the grave. It's just like a little girl in the family that's running around the house. <laughs> It's not, it's not a zombified... It's not the like black-eyed child floating from the grave. It's an ordinary sweet little girl who's normal Aww. and friendly and at home with the people she's with. You look emotional. Do you feel emotional talking about her? Do you feel a connection with her? Maybe I do. I think you do. I, I see think it in I your do eyes. feel connection. What do you do... think it is? I don't know, but I think she's somebody in the family. You I mean, think it could be, it could be Lizzie, or it could be a generations before. Because you've talked about it before, but I've never seen that emotion but, in your eyes. I know, but yeah, exactly. I mean, I do feel quite protective towards the little girl. You I do. do? I, do, I feel like she's a living relative. Really? I don't feel like she's potentially a dead relative. That's interesting. I feel because she's she manifests and she's around, she's just a little girl in the family. Yeah. So I do feel like she's in the family. I don't. I'm not seeing her as a sort of a spirit entity. I'm just mm. seeing her as a member of the family in a different dimension. And that it's a comfortable feeling. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's quite completely normal. But there is the other aspect of the the other end of the whole, of the. Um, shadow and wallpaper okay go because yes. the so there were the there was the aspect of the shadow and then the, the shadow, father yeah. in the room and yes. then the shadow was was known to be in that house yes and so th this goes back we're going back i mean well over 100 years we're going back potentially 120 130 140 150 years yes now in the 1970s on the very site where the house was the host the local hospital expanded and built these new sections on top of where the house was and I did check this and I checked that when my friend told me something I had a friend whose mother was a nurse and she said they're having problems in the morgue because mm. they can't get people to work there at night because well, people are getting, yeah, that would be a scary are getting job. scared because it's yes. the morgue and he said usually it's just a morgue it's like literally just like flesh in shelves they know they're just bodies. Yeah, usually the people who are trained to And they're trained to be used to that, yes. But yes. they were seeing shadows. Ah. Oh. And that they were was seeing the same shadows spot? of a man. Really? So I then had a quick look where the morgue was in the hospital because I found the plan and put it onto the plan of the house. And guess what? The morgue That's is right, built yeah. di right directly on top of where That's the house was. So the people in the hospital are thinking, because it's the morgue, it's about the bodies, what's happening, blah, blah. But what they're not realising is there's, we have, we know there were ghosts and hauntings, whatever you want to call it, mm. on that spot 
130, 140, 120, 150 years ago. Well, they say the ship looked like a father, but perhaps it was older than that. Maybe it was. Know. Maybe they just saw a man and then... Yeah, assumed the because he was just gone. Died, yes. They thought, so yes, maybe that, that was, maybe it wasn't their father. It's interesting, that husband. But it's it a really good is story. interesting because it, it spans that thing. It takes it out of the family yes, thing and does. brings it into the situation yes. of, of people presuming... It's that thing about presumption, never presume about things because we don't know. Oh, that's People pretty, are making yeah. presumptions. Yes. That's, it's a morgue, it must be something to do with Well, I would imagine yeah. that, that some entities or uh, energies hang out with their bodies yeah, exactly. still, I'm sure. Yeah. Even in the Buddhist traditions, they have yeah, seven days yeah, seven and days seven, of, seven yeah, days of passage, 49. Yeah. And so, yeah, so it's something. I don't know when we leave the body. I think it's most important that we say we don't know anything. We, we don't, don't know, know crap. Anything. Yeah, we don't know how, how the. It's from what they used to describe the body. They used to describe the body. Body, um, like as, as when you said turn on or off. I think we see the body leaving it as like turning off an electric light. Mm. But people used to describe the body, uh, the soul leaving the body in stages. Like when you used to turn off the old fashioned gas lights, the gas mantles, and if you turn off the old fashioned gas lights, they don't get out, suddenly they get. Oh, that's a really And then they great, just yeah. glow down, and that glow remains there for maybe. 40 seconds. Like the old TV sets? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So, it's, don't, don't see, don't, don't, maybe don't Fuck. see the passing of the, spot, of the yeah. spirit from the body in the way that electric light goes off, but in the way that if you turn a gas light or a gas mantle a off, slow it fade. goes down and fades because there is that traversing out of the body. Interesting. Yeah, but it is comforting to know that there's something else outside. And that's yeah. one of the things I was going to talk to you about is, and also our studio audience, is to why do we like ghost stories so much? Because they just don't ever get, I don't even think they ever get old. Everybody, I don't care who you are. There's something about, some people love them. Some people love them. Some people can't get enough. That's why there's so many programs. That's why there's so many stories. That's why there's so many books. Why do you think it is that we like ghost stories so much? That humanity? Why do you think it is that we are fascinated with ghost stories? And we well, have been since ancient Egypt. We've been, uh, it's, it's been since the beginning of humankind. Why? What's your answer? I think there are different reasons. Give me your the I think first one, one off the top people, of your head. Um, we're talking to a friend about this today. Yes. And he came at a very good point. Basically, people like to be scared, but when you tell a ghost story, you're in a safe spot. Yes. You're not actually experiencing, you're yes. feeling the, the fear, but you're not physically there, so you're in a safe spot. So there's yeah. one. People do like to be scared. Yes. The emotion. Um, but personally, for me, why I would like ghost stories, which is probably slightly different to most people, because I've always loved the past. Yes. I'd say the past will You the are history. a time lord. So I've always loved the past. And the spirits, or the potential spirits, or the echoes of the recordings, what we were talking about last week, yes. are echoes of these periods. So for me, it's like, um, it, it's this link to a, a, a past or a time that has gone, but the it's past somehow there. So I think there are different reasons, but generally people like to be scared. But in a safe like, environment. In a safe environment, and also, it also indicates that there are potential, there's the potential I wouldn't, maybe I'd say the word evidence, or maybe I wouldn't say the word evidence, the p potential of, of life after death or the potential of that type of thing. Mm. But people are feeling that, oh, okay, this is some kind of um, evidencing of there's not end. So maybe it's also about comforting yourself too. Absolutely. I find them very comfortable. I love to watch them while I'm cooking. I love to listen to them. Um, I've always been fascinated with them. I think um, that many people have the same comfort. There's a comfort knowing that yeah. this isn't the end. And it's also like the roller coaster thing that you can experience great fear In knowing that you are safe and that it isn't happening to you. Like, uh, you know stories like the walking dead and and it's it's now amped up to stuff that's far beyond even our comprehension yeah. with the technology of today yeah. is being frightened and not being at risk yeah which is a uh a primal human instinct so yeah. that's why we like ghost stories so much so that's what our, our podcast is yeah. about um, is stories from the standing room it's not yeah. just it's a thing uh, of, of when people play video games they're right? engaged in that situation but, but they're, they're not really they're not really shot. being shot but they, that's true that's true. Uh, okay, well, I do have um, I do have our uh, tale of the arcane oh, from yeah. Joy. Yeah, I'd Joy like to read her. Yeah, I know yeah. you have more. I've got some more too. I want yeah. to keep an eye on time. Going to Joy. Um, okay, uh, Joy. One, thank you very much. Two, um, 
She's amazing. We want to ask you, please send in your stories. I know that you have them. Everybody goes, oh, I've got it, but I haven't sent it yet. I've got it, but I haven't sent it yet. Oh, yeah, we and want I'll to send them. it. Yeah, no, we send them in. Them. Send them in. Uh, and either I'll read them, or you can have uh, an MP3, and we'd love to play you telling your own ghost story, because yeah. that's the best part. And don't forget, I've... there will be a point in future when we have enough where we will be... Uh, publishing a book of all of the stories so if you send your story in you'll go into the book and you'll be able to buy it yeah if it's chosen and it's on the show then it goes into the book which we will do uh, we're looking hopefully to do annually stories from the standing room so Um, you'll be able to have your your story in print stories from the standing room tales of the arcane from you our studio audience so that's what we need so Joy's in there she's in there twice already here we go her story is about what we talked about in our promo which is the could it be foreboding or could it be a beneficial a forewarning from those who have passed. Yeah. What do you think? Huh? Both. Yeah, it's going to be both. Okay, here we go. Depending. Thank you. Joy is pretty amazing. She really does have a connection. She's been able to tap into the other side um, all of her life. And so I just find it really fascinating. Uh, Joy writes, I have always been empathetic as far back as I can remember, going to historical places and feeling what happened and seeing what happened. Many times being brought to tears, especially at Civil War battlefields and places like that. One of the first experiences she had was at 11 years old. Her mom was working as a manager at 7-Eleven, and it was about 11.30 at night. And as she woke up hearing, baby, wake up, baby, wake, wake up, baby, wake up. I woke up to see my grandma Bessie standing there. Grandma Bessie is her father's mom, and she had passed away five years earlier when she was six. She never called her by her name, Joy. She always called her baby. Grandma said, Mom is in trouble. And I ran out into the living room, hysterically telling my dad, I had to call Mom. I've got to call Mom. He would have normally been mad at me for staying up that late and would have said no, but this time he picked up the phone and called her. And there was no answer at the 7-Eleven when the father called. She started getting even more and more hysterical, and as she told him what happened, he of course tried to tell me it was just a dream, don't worry about it, calm down, everything's fine. But her grandma was standing there, standing right there with him, saying, no, 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 your mom's in trouble, your mom's in trouble. So my dad kept trying to call, finally put me in the car, we drove to the store, when we got there, it was surrounded by police cars. And my mom had been robbed at gunpoint at 11.30 p.m., which is exactly the time that Grandma Bessie came to their bedside. And um, I asked her, I said, oh, my God, is your mom okay? She said she was shaken, uh, but not hurt. She said, um, this is, she's also the uh, author of Apparition in the Rafters. So not only is this happening with her grandmother, but she was the one, she was the grandmother now that her grandbaby is looking up and seeing these. uh, This is one of our very first stories from the Standing Room Stories, uh, the Apparition in the Rafters that they were talking to during the movie Frozen. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much, Joy. She was the grandmother and from the grandmother. So she was baby and grandma. A um, sensible grandmother, which so, kind of, there's another story here, which I will tell another day when I got permission from the friend who, who was involved. Yes. But also the, the story of the, the kind of amusing story of um, a friend who's gay and came out with the help of her grandmother. Oh, that's wonderful. The grandmother that had passed? Yeah. That's fantastic. So that's that, fabulous. Yeah. So that's another story, but I'd need to ask my friend to get permission to tell the story. Obviously. Okay, yes. So, uh, but I was going to ask you, as we're going into that, we're talking about grandmothers. Um, can we go to your grandmother at the tap story? Oh, yeah, it's just a very small, simple story. We have a The bit. tap is the faucet, yeah, everybody. The faucet. The faucet. We're going back to the same blocks of cottages where I described earlier. These, uh, these early cottages that probably went back to about 1700. Just 1700? Yeah. Um, yeah, ish. <laughs> um, and my grandmother, this is in 1937, my right. great grandmother had been taken ill. Yes. Um, she had a stroke, she was very ill in bed, and she was close to death. Right. And, and back then, if you, if you, one, even if you had money, there's not much they could do if you had a stroke. There was no life support they system. They just put you somewhere comfortable. Yeah, and, and, and if you hadn't got any money, all they could do is basically try and get some broth or warm tea down your throat. There's not much they could do. What about medicine? Uh, well, it's according, isn't the depression? They couldn't afford too much anyway. Back in the depression, yeah. no one had any money. Yeah. So they're right in the middle of the depression. But she has a stroke, and it's it's major anyway. So they they know what's happening. And she's bed rest. She's she, in bed. Yeah, she's in bed, and my grandmother goes to the tap, the faucet, which is outside. It's a shared tap, 
Um, and she's filling the kettle. Does that kettle translate? Yes, they know okay. what it <laughs> um, And so she's filling the kettle to take it back to the fire. And I think the fire is, if it was my grandmother's fire, it would have still been an old-fashioned open fire with uh, the great arms of metal. Oh, yes. And the medieval. Then the, yeah, the medieval oh, type fire. Yep. And that's what my grandmother's, because she was getting some tea in a grandmother's house. Yeah. So it would have been an old-fashioned medieval style um, fireplace, certainly 18th century. So she was filling the kettle and she turned, she turns around and her mother's standing there and she didn't think anything for a moment. Because she's used to And she just goes, it. oh, you've got to... And she realised she's fully dressed and she's just ah. looking. And at that moment, the moment of realisation, she's standing, she's smiling. The mother is? Yeah, the mother, the, my great-grandmother is standing there smiling. She's wearing her clothes. She's wearing her clothes. Not a bed gown. Not a bed gown. Interesting. And she just drops the, ca- drops the kettle and mm. runs into the house and she's died. Oh, wow. That's interesting to think about what happens And afterwards. we've got the photograph of her. Let's, yeah, if yeah, people want to visualise Let's her. take a look at, this is the one who passed? This is the one who yeah. had the stroke? Yeah, the, 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 okay. the, 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 he's the person that had the stroke. Okay, there she is. There she is. And she and was the one who appeared. Yep. That's beautiful. And that's your grandpa. I recognize his face. That's he's good. my great-grandfather. Great-grandfather, I sorry. I'm yes. not actually... A, 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 he was her second husband, so I'm not related to him. Oh, I I'm see. I'm never related to her. Well, that's... A, okay, so she did appear. So it makes you wonder what happens after, immediately after exit. Yeah. Do you get a chance to be in your astral body and say goodbye? Yeah. Do you? Potentially. I mean, there are lots of people that say they've experienced this. Lots of people have said they've it's seen it global, as well. global, so it but doesn't seem quite common. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we also have Jack. Can I show the picture of Jack? Oh, yes, Jack. Uh, I want you to my tell... Uncle Jack and my Auntie Irene. Okay. And there's a story about her, too, later. But there's... Well, actually, I wanted you to get to that story, but I, there's two versions of that story. One was... Oh, the, yeah, my, my. The one that you remember <laughs> as a child, okay, which is far more uh, dramatic yep. than what actually happened, which is a very beautiful story. So let's yes. take a look at Jack. Okay, here we take go. Take a look at little Jack. Let's take a look at Jack. He's cute as can be. Look at Jack. There's Jack. Okay. And how... This is Jack, and who's in... The, this is My your aunt? Auntie Irene. Oh, yes. Okay, they both have. Okay, and so... And that's, that's taken about 1905. Good. Okay, good. This is a good shot of that. I think we got... Yeah, that's a pretty clear shot. Okay. Yeah. Now, tell me about your your uh, recollection. Well, I child, heard this Jack. story of a toddler. Yep. And was terrified because, or well, maybe I turned it as a toddler when I'm about five or six or that kind of yes. age. And I had turned it into a, a 1960s gothic horror. Uh-huh. Because the story I remember as a child was my grandmother uh, was desperate at the, the, the death of Jack. She adored Jack. How old was Jack? Jack was about 11 when he died. Okay. About nine, he died in... Oh. Uh, Maybe he was a little bit older, he was about 11, but maybe 13, and he died right. about 1920. Bless his little heart. Um, that would be very difficult. But she was heartbroken. Yes, I understand. And she could, literally couldn't let go. She couldn't accept the fact he died. I understand. And she was so heartbroken. And it just went on for months and months. And then one day she was, she was on the stairs... And she was kind of got a scrubbing brush and was scrubbing the carpet as people used to scrub everything back in the day. And she was scrubbing the wood and cleaning the carpet with the scrubbing brush. And she was aware of something and she looked up. And th- this is my, my childhood memory of this is not the real story, this is I thought it was and I'd interpreted it as a child. And I thought what happened is that Jack was just standing there in front of her and then he kind of rotted in my in, like the 1970s said, movies like 1970s movies oh my god and uh, he kind of rotted in front of her it's like a skeletal thing but actually that's not the story thank that's, god thank god the real story which I had interpreted in my childhood brain is actually far more palatable okay and she was she was scrubbing the stairs yes and she looked up and suddenly the stairs became illuminated with light, like a blue light. Really? And as the, the, the light became a form, and it was just Jack. Like her son. It, his It was vision. literally, it, it, like, it was like coming at the light was forming him, and light was radiating from him. Oh. And this is in the 1920s, this is before movies, so now we would see this as a movie set, as it is a movie kind right, of scene. Right, yes. But in 1920 you wouldn't experience it. No. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be what you would describe. No. And then he just smiled at her and looked at her. Oh. And then just melted away. 
Less but into the light, it. just leaving this light. There's a blue, golden... Gold, blue and gold light. And so after that, how was she? She was fine, she was able to let go. Oh. I mean, she wasn't fine, she would missed him, but yes. she was able to deal with Jack's death. Much more after healing. After seeing him on the stairs. Yes. So, so in actual fact, he disappeared in this blue light. So at the top of the stairs, when she was cleaning, she looked up and she saw a boy, yeah. and that he was okay. He was okay. And he knew she was hurting. Yeah, I mean, oh. if if she she we don't know if that was just her brain just telling us that, or if there was a if there was some kind of visitation, we wouldn't know. But I'd like she to was, think was she was able to deal with. That was the important thing. Wow. She was able to deal with the death after that point. I can't imagine. I can't. And, that, imagine. and that, that's my grandmother there, the one. If you want to share them, that, that, the one with a bit of a rip by her. And this is? This is Jack's mom. Jack, this is Jack's mom. This okay. is my grandmother, okay. about 1899. There she is. The one with the, the this one here. Right there, that's your grandma. That's my grandmother, okay. about, about 115, 120. Oh, they like her. They like her. That's really amazing. No, they love her. You're getting hearts. That's Good. wonderful. Beautiful. Um, I want you to talk about Irene, but I want to uh, talk about, I'm just going to tell mom's story. Yeah, yeah, mom's uh, story Just now. because I yeah. want I just wanted, I looked at the time and we're having a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, yeah they, it's mom's story. Um, well, uh, this was uh, actually about uh, my own mother who passed in 2003. Uh, she died in, um, you know this story very well, um, but you weren't there. I was, we weren't together in 2003. Uh, in 2003, I was in California. My mother passed away in, um, Char might be on, actually. Char, uh, my cousin Char, who's more like a sister to me, um, who was very close to my mother. And uh, when I got the call to go back that she passed, uh, I go fly back for the funeral, and um, and uh, it was just a, be a beautiful ceremony. And we come back, and I'm at the house where I live with uh, Alex and Alex's father, platonically. I always wondered why people thought we were together. Because we lived together, we have a kid, but we weren't together. But anyway, um, no one was home. Alex was at school, and Danny wasn't there. And I went out to the... Um, I went out to the garage to do the laundry, and the the laundry. This is a very common thing, I guess. People of other people have talked about this. That, the, and we have top loading washing machines in the states. Yeah. Okay, so the laundry lid was open, and I thought, oh, it's Danny's home. He must have opened it. I closed it, went left the garage, and this is three days after mother passed. I walk back out to. to it's time to put it in the dryer, and it's back up again. Mm. I thought that's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Danny, no, Danny. Danny's not there. Yeah. Um, and it's against the law of gravity. It's not like it's falling. It's there's it's no the way. Opposite. There's just no way for it to vibrate all the way up. It just isn't. It isn't. And I thought of a story that Danny had told me uh, about a friend, who very well. He's on Facebook as well. When his mother passed, she also opened the washing machine thing. So I yeah. th started thinking about mom. I thought that's strange. Closed it again. Went inside. Came back out. And I will be damned. It was open again. But in the middle of the garage, on the floor, yeah. was this item. Yep. Okay, now this item, literally, I'm going to show you in just a second, is, um, it says a gift for mom, so it was from a Mother's Day something, and it said from the makers of Similac. When I was a child, when I was a little baby, my mother wrote a poem about Similac to the company Similac, about how much I loved Similac, and the company wrote back and they featured it in this little pamphlet thing, so if you said the word Similac to me, nothing would be more mom. But this, literally, and I've saved this. Oh, they like that. Look at their little faces. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It says, a gift for mom. Yeah. And it says, oh, so the, you, those of you are on podcast, yes. it's small sachet. It says, from the makers of Similac. This yeah. was in the middle of the garage. Yes, it was one simple way of... There's no way. I don't even know where this came from. Yeah. This is, this is such a special thing. And it says, a gift for mom. From the makers of Similac. Now this is a hand gel, but it was in the middle of Danny's garage. It was utilized in the middle. I don't know how. I have no. I opening. have no explanation. And from that moment forward, it's drawing a, a line. This is from. Well, this the, is me. The only thing I could think of was that uh, Danny's friend Frank, when his mother passed, she had left the washing machine lid open yep. too, and it was something very similar. So but I did associate. Because it's because it's got a similar. I yeah. associated the washing machine lid with Frank's mother. And yeah. then when I went in for the third time, there was this in the middle of the room. I have her on tape reading the poem that she wrote to the, the, sim, the makers of Similac. Yeah, I remember hearing that. Yes, and so nothing, if you said the word Similac, that would absolutely equate to mother. So in a way, she kind of let me know that she was all right. Yeah. After
after that, I never worried about her. I yeah, thought, you know, I thought she's she's where she needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. So that was okay, um, and that was absolutely just as real as uh, could be. And I would, I, I couldn't make that up. I couldn't make that up. No, you wouldn't. And there's no, I tried to manage to see if I could shake the washing machine to, to duplicate. Could yeah, but you can't make it go up. You oh. can only make it go down. Oh, that's really interesting. So, um, I, and then, so I said to dad, I said, dad, when you go, can you let me know you made it there all right? Yeah. <laughs> I do. And I, I think, I think everybody uh, does say that to their loved ones. Let me know you got there okay. So that was really an interesting, um, interesting personal one. But I know that you had with Jack, we had the picture of Jack and Irene. Um, you were talking about... Yeah, the, the little girl we saw earlier yes. with Jack, um, when she is older, in fact, in 1967, so she's in her 60s. Yes. Um, she was uh, diagnosed with having cancer. Mm. Now, I can't remember if it was just before the point that she was diagnosed or just after, mm. but certainly at this point. Her father, my grandfather, do we want to do pictures? Yes, we will show pictures. It's just the, the, the springs on that couch. He's so handsome. Yeah, there we there are. There he is. And for those of you on podcasts, there will be a, the, the photographs you will be able to see associated to the podcast. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, gosh, we need to remember that. Uh, everybody yes. over on SoundCloud and Spotify, yes. uh, if so you, our please, website is yeah, under construction. Go onto the website and you will be able to check these photos because I know for you podcast people and uh, it will be frustrating, but you can yes. see the photos. You can see them right now on, well, within the next few hours, as soon as this hits YouTube, uh, they will be up on facebook.com forward slash stories from the standing room. Our website, stories from the standing room.com is in pre-production, but that will be our home but base. It, yeah, but in so we will have will, all of them. You yes. will be able to see these yes. for those of you who are listening on podcast. Yes. So, okay, anyway, so sorry. My, I mean, grand, yes. Uh, my grandfather died a couple of years ago. He died in about 90, a couple of years before rather. He died about 64. Yes. Uh, no, 65, and this is 67. The man we just saw. Yes. Yeah, the man we just saw, my grandfather, died uh, age 85 or well, something. Oh, that's a good long life. In 1965. Yes. 1967, my aunt is diagnosed with having cancer, and at this time, she's sitting, this is two years after he died, she's sitting in the, in the house, and the side, that, but the house can be approached by the side, what would be called a covered entry. So it's kind of, you have, to, you have to open the door from the street, close the door, walk up this, this passage. That's side still of the house. outside, but yep. it's underneath And she's the facing building. the window. Right. So if you walk up this passage and then around, you, yes. would, you would then walk in front of the window and you would be seen to go into the back door. Okay. And so family members are going the back door rather than the front door. Gotcha. So she hears the door open and she's sitting there. It's daytime. No TV on. She's quite quiet. She's just sitting there. And she hears the door open. And thinks, oh, someone's coming. And I mean, often most people she knew, she kind of knew their step. Mm. And she realised she hears the click. Ah. Because my granddad walked with a stick in a very slow, slow particular like way. Like a crutch. Yeah. yeah. So, so the tap of his stick and his walk. Oh. It's in this, it is absolutely his walk. Knew it was him. Knew it was the way he walked, his pace, exactly. And knew it was him. It was absolutely him walking. I understand. The, and then he, 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 she hears him walk around and she's really scared. She's looking at the window and it just stops. But she did die a few, a few months later. Do you think he came to help her over? I think it's that thing again that, well, either you're closer to the veil, yes. so you're closer to the other world, so mm -hmm. maybe you're entering that realm, mm -hmm. possibly, or maybe, so that could be her, mm. or it could be him just sending a message like, I'm, he, I'm with you. Yeah. It could be anything. I got you. It could be you. anything. I'm, I'm got you back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it is, it is interesting that. That is, oh, I'm wondering... But it's, often you get, it's, these, all these stories are actually coming back to support and comfort and um, pro quite protective. Yes, of the entry and out uh, go. You were talking about, you know how we talk about doulas and midwives, as far as I'm... Oh, yeah, well, I know yeah, about the, the, the woman herself. Yeah. The, the woman, they, they didn't just do ingoing, yeah. they did outgoing yeah. as well. Because so. the, my, my great-grandmother, the woman who appeared when she died at the tap, at the faucet. Um, she was a, what these call the midwives, but the midwives would see you in and see you out. 
Yes. It was information that was passed down from mother to daughter and never outside the family because people, but traditionally, people were still frightened of the witch hunters. Yes. So it was handed down. This yes. is the, uh, these are the people that saved lives, but by saving lives, they were persecuted. Yes. So the information was always kept within the family. But she, she was a, she was, if anyone was, be, if she was, anyone was being born, particularly if anyone was dying, she would see them in and see them out. Because and they she had was also ways, a herbalist. Way, way, uh, ways of helping and they using. They had the old ways of, they, yeah, they had the old secret ways of. What were they called? Being, they were, st- they were called midwives. Really? In, the, in a because, way. Because to us, I, if I speak for Americans, a midwife to me is just the way in. Having a midwife yeah. on the way out is beautiful. It is, but they used to do the same, you see. Yes. They, they would see you in and see you out. Yeah. Like David of, Dowdy. Like our friend yeah, David Yeah, like Dowdy. David Dowdy. Well, and I think yes. that's that's exactly what she does. The same, she did the same as David Dowdy. It wasn't like she was a medical practitioner, but she, would, she, she had handed down ways of touch yes. at the point of death. Yes. Really quick, David is, uh, he specializes in the uh, end of life, uh, loving um, a touch and massage. I want to say massage, it's not really massage, it's literally being with and hands on as you pass over in um, not just hospice, but what also is it called? It's called, begins with a P, palliative, palliative, palliative. palliative. Yes. So David Dowdy, we gave you a shout out there because he is so loving and it's so weird. Exactly the same as that, that's what What she does. So she did that stuff because the body you know is so a lot of people are like oh i don't want to i don't want to upset you i want to touch you and you're in a bed it's so loving yeah and so that's natural. what she would do she would yeah. touch and also she'd let them lay them out oh. so she knew that touch thing was bef- just before the point of death and yes. after the point of death and so there was certain sort of ancient knowledge mm. about how you touch the body before death mm. and then continue to touch it after death in the laying out well that's a big thing that's lost knowledge but that's what it david's re- rediscovering is yes ancient and he's teaching way. It too. Oh, there's hearts that they know David. David Good. is very, yeah, uh, he's really he what he's doing. He might be with us. He might are. be. Hello, Hello. David. Um, uh, also, death. Oh, now we really don't. Just check oh, oh, we're yep, fine. We were Remember when I, I went to that gal's house my very first month here, and she lived in an old building. Maybe it was built in the late 1500s. They literally had a room that was allotted for laying out the bodies. Yeah, if you're so wealthy. So, because you if do. you're wealthy, you actually had a funeral home room where you were, it was nobody's bedroom. You literally had that because you had all of the uh, in laws and all of your parents passing away and your children as well so you would crank them out yeah and you maybe lose half but you, yeah. we're actually talking about probably less than five percent of the population for most of us yes. most of you and us our great 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 grandparents when you died there was no undertakers we were, most people were so you were the undertaker before. you were the undertaker yes. you either laid them on a board on the bed and had to sleep next to the corpse until yes. they were buried or you'd lay them on the floor or a table but a lot of people didn't have the space of a table it was sure. a luxury yep. so often people are even had to sleep next to their corpses they would just find a board or something to put under the body mm-hmm. because bodies start to to break up yes quite they quickly. do yes they do um but he, back in the day there was no light there was no there was very few candles they couldn't afford it mm. these very dark small houses yes and the, but you have to sleep with the corpse yep. fact, even my mother had to sleep in the same room as her grandmother she in, when the, the the lady we were talking about not in the said, same bed not in the same bed but she was, she was laid out in the room yes. before she was buried yes because that was a very normal natural thing it was thing a very normal natural thing and it's all based on poverty because we forget now um what it's like if you don't have money you can't afford bodies to be taken away you can't afford things to be done you can't afford the coffee you're just buried in a in a hole in a hole in a pauper's grave and most most of our get most of our grandparents Mm -hmm. wherever they walk from um in the states or, or in europe wherever they were in the world, mm. they were poor. Yes. Not everybody was Cleopatra. Yeah. And not everyone was the Duchess of whatever. They yes. were just poor and couldn't afford to. So they were living with those bodies, literally. Yes, that's true. So it laid out in the home. And then you also mentioned at the time of the funeral that the mourning period. Oh, the mourning period. Not only did people wear black, but they, they kept the windows closed. Yeah, I mean, even when, I, when, I, when, my, gra- when my, my aunt and my grandparents died, from the moment... Um, the person died all the cur- all the curtains in the house all the drapes are drawn yes the lights are kept low tv and all the tv is is on but very low okay 
and not until after the funeral are the curtains drawn. Really? No, it's, oh, I don't, okay. I don't yeah. know about in the States, but here, and, and on, the, and on the day of the funeral, the curtains are still drawn here. Mm. I don't know if that's still happening no, in the States. No, not that I know of. Yeah, no, it, no, here you no. still, on the day of the funeral, the curtains are drawn, and it, they used to also put, they used to put straw outside the house so mm. that when the horses and carts used to go over, it was quiet. Oh, that's so, interesting. So everything is kept quiet. There's no shouting in the house. The TV turned around, the radio so you turned have around, a the music's down. The reflection. Um, yeah, it's just a quiet yeah. point. That's really a beautiful way of doing it. We should do that. Yeah, and I, I, I think the ritual of death is quite important. And I think one of the things that we're losing as we get more into like the kind of, into the syndrome of like, just happy, there's nothing wrong with celebrating the life, but it, there's a lot of emphasis on the happy funeral and all the rest of it. And I think some of the, the old rituals of mourning were there for a reason, because they helped you through a process. Maybe, yes, to and, get through the grief, yeah. yeah and that, pro, it was like a, an emotional armour. Yeah. It was something that, that just the wearing of the black and going through these things, it helped you be able to process what was going on. That's and I think now we, we're expected to kind of be able to... It's not Deal, right away. Deal with yeah. it you know, and maybe go to a therapist and maybe that's not what you want. Maybe we actually need that space of the old fashioned way yeah. to come to terms with these things and to be able to just accept via some of the more ritualistic things that we're they, in this transitional stage. They have changed to the celebration of life, but there certainly are stages of grief for those that are so close. Uh, and that uh, there is an expectation of just get over it because it doesn't supposed to, it's not existing. Well, that's true, but the funerals always did have that. The old fashioned wake or funeral. In, in the older yeah. days, yes. Yeah. I'm talking about nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. But now I think you go to the funeral and it's a celebration of life at the funeral. But I, th I think what, what happens now, what used to happen is the funeral was you were allowed, allowed to let the emotion just mm -hmm. flow out of you and just sort of exercise sadness and then you go back to the funeral or the, or the wake yeah. and you'd start to tell jokes and get jolly and that's where the celebration of the, the life really takes like off all the gathering of all the friends of family yeah and yes. then you tell the stories about the person the jokes start and people start the laughing. coffin joke uh yeah maybe not the coffin <laughs> joke well, one of these days you well, are you're gonna let me tell it on the show one day yeah probably not the, the, the day okay. i'm letting you have to it's on youtube right? oh yes probably all right well real quick because we are running long i need to get to red foxes mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, once again we're asking you to send in your ghost stories if you'd like to uh, mail them in uh, any paranormal adventure could be UFO could be uh, you know an out of body experience it could be anything uh, astral travel uh, we would be happy to share this with you because that's what stories from the standing room is it is um, well there can be spooky scary history folklore facts and more yeah. this is Red Fox uh, am I calling her by her right name hopefully ah I hope it is Red Fox because it's from New York and I have deleted that page. But here, I have her story. Are you we ready? Have, yeah, we have it too, right? Um, starting in her early 20s, once in a while, a relative would come to her in a dream. They would insist that she would take them either to the train, a cruise ship, or an airport. They would insist that she'd stay with them until they departed. And within a week to 10 days afterwards, that person passed away. One night when I was sleeping, I had a dream, Red writes. Or rather, more was like an out-of-body experience. My grandfather was in the hospital, dying, and he made me promise that I would take care of my grandmother. In this dream, I was in his room, and he grabbed my hands and asked me if I remembered my promise. I assured him that I had, and then I jolted awake and just made a mental note to myself to call my grandmother. I called the hospital, and my grandmother was very angry and told me it's not a good time. She hung up the phone on me. I knew that day that that was the day that he would die. I got the phone call just a few hours later that he did die. One time, a very old crotchety woman came to me in a dream. Her accent was rather odd. She said she was very uh, upset that I didn't know who she was. She said, don't you recognize your own grandmother? I had not seen my paternal grandparents since I was about three. My grandmother had made uh, my grandfather move back to Switzerland. He did not want to go. The reason her accent sounded strange is that she grew up in the German section speaking uh, with that influence on her accent, and her grandfather grew up in the French-speaking section, Bern, to be exact. Oh, okay. Um, my father was the first one in his family to be born there. He has an older brother, and she died a few years uh, a few days later, sorry, after that appearance. Crotchety. She was. Sure. Another night, I had a dream that my Uncle George, who was my maternal grandfather's brother, visited me in a dream, but didn't speak to me, but he had at least two strokes that I know of. 
I called my mother the next day and I told her to call Aunt Ruth and told her of my dream. My mother got annoyed with me and told me that he was just fine. A week later, my mother called me to tell me that he died of a stroke the night before. There you go. So see, what is it? Is it uh, this premonition? Perhaps there are ways of communication and it doesn't always have to be an ominous thing. Maybe it can be, uh, hey, you've got like a midwife on the other side. Maybe. But what? interestingly, yes. on my maternal side, where I think almost when all people die in the family, yes. the women will always have a series of dreams. Yes. Now, I've had some of these dreams, but not always because I didn't have one when my father died. But I know I've had the dreams when, like, certainly a couple of uncles have died the night before for a series of different types of dreams, which I won't get into now, but, but certainly the dreams appear, and they all have the dream the night before. Really? We do need of, to... A couple of the times I've had the same dream too. Really? But not all of the time, because, interesting, I yes. didn't have it when my dad died. Yes, she also writes, read in, in part of her email, that uh, she did not have that with the super close relatives like her mother. Yeah. Uh, but she did with the external pa- uh, family. Well, maybe is... you're dealing with a, with a, a, a yeah. very close relative differently. Yeah, maybe you're not supposed to know if they're the super close ones. Maybe it's yeah, just maybe, too... maybe it's just too close. It's know. just too emotional. It's like you just got to deal with that differently. We are coming up on the end of this episode. We are. Can you believe that? No. Episode number six. We still have so much more to We still do. got lots of stuff which we can We do. We have stuff we didn't get a chance to cover in this episode, yeah. but we will in we a will. future upcoming yeah. episode. Okay. Next week, do you want to tell them what we're talking about next week? <gasps> Plague and pestilence. Plague and pestilence. Pestilence. Ring a ring of roses. Pocket full of poses. Ashes, ashes, we all fall dead. And, that, and wow, that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of darkness behind that, husband. That's oh, a lot of darkness. We're actually moving to the other side. No, I meant when you said it, I could feel the oh, horror. Yeah, the horror of the because place. Because we know, we know of it as a lighthearted, it has now changed most fairy tales. Um, I have very, very, very Oh, yeah, we, well, I think we should adventure. do a whole program on, ghosts, we should. Uh, on fairy tales in the darkness. Mm-hmm. But Ring of Ring of Roses is a great one. It's a great introduction to the play, too. Yeah. Plague pits, plague, so plague, pit, plague and pestilence and death and, and uh, death all pits, that goes with ghosts, it. Death pits, hollow men. So what do we need from them? Tell them. Dead people. Um, no, we, no dead we people. need we... your stories. Yes, we do. We need your stories and we need your, um, if you can, your MP3s. We'd really like to start um, ha- hearing you tell your own stories uh, like we did. So don't sit there yeah. and wait for another time. Um, do it now. Just yeah. type it out, even if it's just a couple paragraphs. Do that now, please, uh, because we'd like to share uh, your story yep. on an upcoming episode of Stories from the Standing Room. So you can find us at facebook.com forward slash stories from the standing room. Pop over and give us a like, if you will. Please do. Yes. And also our website, stories from the standing room.com, will be our, our web guy is on holiday right now. Yep. He's actually off with his family on the coast uh, up in Seattle. Okay. So he will be back uh, within the month. We should have our website up and running. Yeah. Uh, Smoothly. Absolutely. Until then, it will be facebook.com forward slash Ann Kelly for friends and yeah, family. And the, these photographs will be on both those sites so you can see them if you're a podcaster yes. or a Facebook friend. So remember, podcast, we want to thank everybody at SoundCloud. Thank you, SoundCloud. We love you. Thank you, iTunes listeners. Yeah, thank if you, you get, everyone. If you get a chance, if you're listening on iTunes and you enjoy what you're hearing, which is history, haunted rooms, uh, folklore, and more. Uh, here at Stories from the Standing Room, do give us a review. That really helps us in the views. Yeah, we like our reviews. Well, we like them, but it also helps us be seen by other people. Yeah. Share us with your friends if you share can. Share us, yes. Share and us we're like going to be... What you share. Share us like... A plague. Bag of chips. Maybe like uh, the bubonic plague. Well, that's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably what you wouldn't want like to share. Like syphilis. You know, well, I share us think like that. syphilis. I didn't think that, and I actually, I pulled back from <laughs> Oh, I didn't. Did. <laughs> but you did. Share us like syphilis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you would, please, yeah. I guess. Well, not yeah. really. Not Make quite. us viral. Spread us around. There you go. We can be viral, but not syphilis. Yeah, just, just, uh, kind of, just say it like a bag of chips. <laughs> yes, like a bag of chips, which is crisps. Well, I was thinking like fish and chips, like English chips. Okay. Have a chip. Would you like a chip? We need yeah. to explain that then. We did, we're explaining that and no. Okay. Uh, well, chips are crisps and crisps are chips. Does that make any sense? No. No, yes, no, fries. no. No, chips. Okay. Chips are crisps and God chips damn are fries. fries. Yes. Unless they're skinny, then they're a fry. Let's Wait a minute. There. I said something. Yeah, okay. Anyway. We've got it. Sorry. <laughs> fish and chips is fish and fries. Yeah. Right. And crisps yeah. are chips, for God's so, sake. Yeah. Like a bag of chips would be like, like big, juicy fries. Yeah, they are big, succulent steak fries. But they're not, yeah. They're not going to share us like syphilis if we don't stop it. 
I'm not mentioning that. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for joining us for episode six. We'll Take see you care. next week for see episode seven. Week. We love you Thank and we you. appreciate you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you. We know how to exit now. I bye think. bye. No, bye, we, we may have some problems here. We will see you next week. Thank Take you, care. Studio bye -bye. Audio.